I'm glad we named our daughter Natron Means. <laughs> <laughs> Natron. That's my, that's my new dad joke. I am Natron. My, my new dad joke is to tell everybody who's pregnant, a boy or a girl, Natron Means Chalura. Like, that was awesome. That is such, that is such like a, a huge running back name. Yeah. You yes. know? <laughs> you can't be anything else. Means. Uh, yeah. Natron Means. So is this part of the show? Or are we... Uh, no. Is this the pre-show? You want me to hit the music? New music? I, I don't know. Are you good? I'm good. I'm good to go. Ooh. It's just an instrumental. Yeah. Sweat equity. Get you gyrating. Fight 80 style. City. Mm, mm, mm. Getting into it. I wanted something that gets me amped every time. Hey, people are loving the rebrand. We told the public we'd do it. We did it. I six, dig it. Six months later. We still, we're a little late, but we got things going on. The point is, we put it out there. We did it. Not in the time we wanted to, but we're still, we, you know, we could have easily, a year ago, we would have said, fuck it, and just not done it, right? Like the studio that we talked about? We're going to do it. The new one. How do you put... How do you put non-cash uh, uh, kind of generating stuff ahead of ahead of like work you need to do to, to keep the lights on? I know. For that said studio. I know. How long did it take you to do the rebrand? It's slowly. It's, it's, uh, we didn't really uh, – I bet if we sat in a room for a day, we could probably figure it out. Yeah. That yeah. We're good at the creative like that. It's just uh, Eric's becoming an entrepreneur now. I am one. Yeah. Already. You are. And uh, it's like the fourth business I'm in on, buddy. I know, but seeing that, but this one is, er, this one's all in. This one's, uh, this yeah. one's with the wifey. That's yeah. different. That's, to, that's family business. Yeah. I can't flake out on this one. I could. <laughs> it's a big flake. Yeah. It's Florida. So you can just move somewhere else in Florida. Mm, and very just leave true. the family. That's true. I could probably move down the street. They'd never find me. Right. Just wear Big Johnson shirts and, you know, grow that mustache out. Tommy Bahamas. Have people over for UFC fights? That other voice you're hearing is uh, my good, good buddy, Michael McGuire, just so you know. Hey, everybody. We forgot to bring you in. We could uh, totally forget to Not introduce much of you. Guess. Oh, Look, stop. The, the third, the second no, side. you're good. No. <laughs> you're a fan, you're a friend. You've got some knowledge on uh, payroll, but we that sounds like snooze fest, so we probably won't get to that. <laughs> uh, unless you've got something interesting we don't know about in the payroll area. You didn't hear my snoring sound effect. Uh, I, I steamrolled. We got a soundboard because we're that kind of uh, show now. Yes. We're rock jocks. Oh, my God. That was a fart noise. Remember that whole thing last episode where we were talking about? That's how I feel. <laughs> you didn't see that coming. That was going to be a gunshot, huh? Remember that whole balance of like, you know, dick jokes, but real business advice right, kind of stuff? Right. Finding that balance. This is going to take us way the other way. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to take us in the non-professional route. Yeah, but I'm interested now. All right. <laughs> you've been just, you've been floating it the yeah, whole time? Yeah. You've been, been in mailing it in. It's oh. got to be so hard not to push one for every single. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got to, you got to be like a sniper with them. It, the podcasts I noticed that do them, they're good about not overdoing it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, but also you got to find those pauses and you, you basically going to have to have your hand like kind of on the keyboard. Segura's good with it. Segura's good. He doesn't overdo it. <laughs> Paul Bryan on uh, Corolla's show is very good at it. Mm -hmm. Speaking of podcasts, I, I heard, uh, guys, we fucked. I got to hear our friend of the program, Robbie Slowick's girlfriend and uh, comedian is really funny. Uh, Casey Balsham was the guest. And I was like, oh, you know what's really cool? I'm finding out my friend's stuff because we haven't talked on the phone in a while. They're in New York. And I was like, oh, I'm finding out that he's dropping loads in his uh, girlfriend to have a kid <laughs> through a podcast that's so really, romantic, po really yeah. popular. Isn't that crazy, though? Yeah, I can't believe weird? he didn't email you that he was dropping loads to have a baby. Uh, you should see the text we that's have. They're works. pretty dark already. So uh, that would be a lighter kind of thing. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but that's uh, more power to him. I hope, I hope uh, they take his everybody's advice. Count is high. No, I hope they take everybody's advice that they give you. I don't know if you had that. What, don't have kids? <laughs> well, there's that. Uh, that's the sad dad club kind of way. But I'd say, when, you know, when like every 
older person is telling you like you got to do it like but they don't say doggy or anything they just say like you got to do it where her face isn't facing you or something like that and you're like uh is think, that a thing i think i don't think that's a thing i was like I oh no you never got that the advice? positions yeah. matter yeah i mean i've heard of the like the woman putting her hips up in the air after yeah is that let true? it soak in i mean that makes sense at least our daughter was conceived, I believe, because we did indoor skydiving afterward. Nice. <laughs> yeah, like a centrifuge. Yeah. Right. It just jumbled her around. That shit will get jumbled everything up. Yeah. Because we literally went right there afterward. And I was like, that, I think that did it. I think because you're on top and gravity and everything. Um, so let's do some sponsors real quick. Uh, you know, we're not going to do the whole read because, you know. You forgot it. I, I can do them. I do them from the heart, Eric, because, uh, you know, you support... Or the fart. <laughs> eh? Good? That was good. That was good. So, if you have a business or you're trying to get your hustle on, you want a second phone line, try grasshopper.com forward slash sweat. Get $50 off that second phone line. Don't be a jabroni and have some Google voice number or just have it go to your fucking personal cell phone. That annoys the shit out of me. If I'm trying to hire someone, they're like, hello? And you're like, is this, did I call business? What is this? <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, with Google Voice, by the way, everybody wants to bust me on this. I had this happen. You cannot use it for business purposes. They don't like it. And so, uh, it's, people Ooh. do. Yeah, for sure. If they, but if uh, they figure it out, because I had this happen with YouTube ad campaigns where we're trying to send people to that number. Oh. And Google Voice on yourself. is like, well, this is a client wanted me to do it. I told her, no, no bueno. Go to trygrasshopper.com for uh, sweat. She didn't want to, uh, she didn't want to do it. And then her phone got taken down. Her phone number is listed in all this collateral, like all this marketing stuff, Ugh. brochures, yeah. Craigslist ads, all this stuff. So phone numbers are important. Uh, it's one of those small things, like these little business things, people think they can skip uh, like payroll mm -hmm. when they get to a certain level and they, they, you can't, there's just shit like accounting. You can't skip. Like, go fresh books. Yeah, see how I did that? Real nice. Perfect segue. <laughs> yeah. go, go fresh. Where, do you have a uh, rapper, like, air horn? No, but I'll, I'll, I'll make put a request. it on the list. Uh, GoFreshBooks.com forward slash sweat. Get your accounting on. You get the hookup. Holla if you hear me. If you use that promo, we'll put all these links in the description. But Got to get your accounting on. If you're like me, you did it in extension, so you'll be doing it now. Uh, you'll be doing all your accounting for 2017 right now. Uh, business taxes are hard. Uh, no, There's no way around it. It changes every year. Go back a few episodes. You can listen to what changes this year, like Meals and Entertainment. Mm -hmm. It's now just meals. Ooh, as a write-off. Don't have a good time at that meal. So you got to figure it out. And then, you know, is, the, is that car a company car? Does that count? Is uh, I some people think like your gym membership. Does that count? I don't think so. Um, unless you thinks that unless you're a model, you can kind of get away with that as a write off. Okay, yeah, okay. Uh, so gofreshbooks.com forward slash sweat, and then last one, Warby Parker. Don't get ripped off by Sunglass Hut, Eyeglass Hut, conglomerate bullshit. They're all owned by one Italian company. And that's why you pay through the fucking nose I saw that for, the 60 things, minutes for the things on your nose, yeah. right? See, it, that 60 minutes one, they're like four years behind too. Yeah. So, so I'm glad you saw that. Uh, Lexotica owns 97% of the market. They own the health, share, they own the health or the eye insurance or whatever that is, uh, part of your health insurance. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, they, they think about Stranglehold it. If you're on them, the entire industry. You just keep moving up the vertical and you just keep going, oh, what else can we get? Mm -hmm. uh, Cyber eyeball division. They, oh, they have LASIK too. They own a lot of LASIK places. <laughs> Dude. Yeah. So all the vision, like it's not just eyeglass wear, sunglass. It's just like the whole eyeball they got. Yeah. Fuckers. I heard they got John Hopkins. No. Uh, Hopkins. Hopkins. <laughs> I'm tripping over my words today. Got Hopkins. Pop, Johnny Hopkins. WarbyParkerTrial.com forward slash sweat. Go to these sponsors, uh, support the sponsors. They support this show. We will reinvest whatever comes in into this show. And maybe you, uh, you could save us a little headache. When you do this, we get a little kickback. We put it into the show. Then we don't have to spend hours doing audio and video tech every time. Getting <laughs> dad mad 
oh. every fucking time. You think we know the, what wires do what by now? No, we know what the wires do. We don't know what they're called, though. <laughs> oh, well, you know, you know like our own nicknaming you, them. Yeah. Right. Our own right. nomenclature. It's like white trash kind of style. <laughs> yeah. It's like, th- this is the one that has the uh, Take that microphone. Dog, dog dick over there and move <laughs> it over there, that cat pussy. Give me that squirrely one. Yeah. So I was listening uh, to Neil deGrasse Tyson on Rogan this morning. I got a boner when I saw he was the guest. That guy is fascinating. Knowledge boner. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm always intrigued by the guys who can take a very complex subject matter and make it interesting. And another level is the guys that do it off the cuff. Right. Mm. Yeah. That means to me, that means he's always thinking about it. I feel like I'm good at that with what we do in the digital area, but I'm not great at it. I, I feel like he's, he's amazing for, for science. Like that's a huge problem with science is that we weren't interested in it growing up. Because no one knows how to teach it. Right? Yeah, I was just going to say, it's a teaching thing. You have to have a certain knowledge to get there. And then once you become a teacher of it, then you're really a master sort of. Yeah, the ability to dumb it down for an idiot like me to un- actually understand what he's talking about. <laughs> I used to hate space, like anything related to space. I used to do a bit, like, why do we spend this much? This doesn't make any sense. Like, let's take care of our own house before we go to someone else's kind of thing. I don't remember the rest of it. Uh, but that was the setup, so that was really good. But, so we have all those spaces, stupid T-shirts sitting around. Yeah, uh, well, the tank tops sold really well, but they were cut off tank tops. So you, nice, you know, showing that belly button, eighty style. So the uh, I, I'm always enamored by these kind of guys. Obama was really good about that. I mm. feel he, yeah. he was more of a, a good PR kind of guy, speaker, or orator. Right, but he he could take That's a worth. complex thing if put on the spot. And kind of answer it in a very eloquent way. Yeah. Um, I feel like uh, there's there's not that many people that do it. There's always like one person in each industry that can do it really well. Uh, that that if I get really loaded on mushrooms, that's what I hope we <laughs> could do here. I'll tell you all about it. But uh, I would say one thing that he brought up that is related to the business world is he talked about NASA and how much we spend, but what we got out of it by accident. And so I preach around here, something I learned from my old boss, everything you do well is a marketing opportunity. So, you know, if we're doing some charity event, milk it as much as you can. Mm -hmm. People won't know you did it otherwise, which is tacky to say out loud. I get it. Yeah. NASA should really have better PR telling all the, all the inventions they come up with. They're always, you know, like like cordless drills. Cordless drills were invented in space. So they, it was invented. This is the example he brought up was that, it, you know, think about it. You have to repair stuff in space. And oh, you you're can't, saying they you made them specifically. Yeah. They're solving problems that we didn't know we had yet. And that, that was kind of the idea. Wing. And, are you sure they want? That's weird. I feel like in space they want things to be tethered so they don't float away. You can't get any nook and cranny, though. You get tangled up. Mm. Which is well, when worse. they go outside the spaceship, <laughs> that's what I'm talking that's about. That's when they need the tethered Space stuff. Walk. They need tethered oxygen. But if you lose a tool in space, that's like a missile floating around the Earth. That's like a big deal. Have you heard of all the space junk? That yeah, is just straight. Yeah, any sort of Earth. Like if there's a, a so? fleck of paint going around. Yeah, but if it hits the space station yeah. going thirty thousand miles an hour or whatever it is, it's like a devastating. Thing. Yeah, but the odds the odds would be that. Or they're way in favor of it not go- hitting anything. Yeah. Because space is infin- infinite. So yeah. It just c- kind of go in any direction. So but 360. They definitely have to track all the like space junk sure. that's up there. So that's a thing. It's not like it goes away. Oh, I'm sure there's an inventory list of stuff lost, but I'm saying like, it, <laughs> but the angle it have to go. Basically, I'm not buying back. this whole cordless drills were invented by NASA thing. I'm not buying it. Um, okay. Well, I'm going to go with Neil deGrasse Tyson <laughs> was he on this knowing? one. Uh, and that was his, his point was like, so we talk about that in the marketing sense that if you're doing your own thing, you're, you're doing your own hustle. It feels terrible, but you got to figure out a way to self promote. We try to, I'm bad about it. I don't, I feel corny doing it, but we're working on that. I feel like uh, there's people that do it. They do it really well with selfie videos. Uh, obviously, like Instagram mm. models and shit. Right. Or the- We've got a level to maintain, though. 
Well, of quality. I just think about would my the guys that are my groomsmen, you know, the best friends you have, would they? Yeah, the honest ones. Would who it, will right? Would any of them? F- would all of them just gang up when you go, dude? That's super. That's terrible. Yeah. I haven't seen anything that you've done like that. No, I, but I'm, that's the thing. I got to get out of that comfort zone because we're never, by staying in the pocket too much, you can never f- roll out, find that uh, guy in the flat. Well, and you can't just listen to that group of friends either because that's their job. That's, <laughs> it's a pretty good consortium though. They keep you in between because like I did stand up and there were a bunch of them that are like, <laughs> you're not funny. You're, right. you're like, uh. I won class wit. Hello. That was my superlative. Uh, we didn't, because we we're, we're bougie. We didn't have class clown. We had class wit. Uh, yeah, pretty cool. Congrats. Uh, yeah, Bert Kreischer and I, Tampa Jesuit. What, what? Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're pretty much the same. He's got his special coming out tomorrow, Secret Time. I'll When's your plug. special? Um, this is every episode's <laughs> oh, special. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> so this is all material. This is, I mean, lose that cricket thing on the soundboard because you won't need it. You didn't even know how to hit it. Yep. No, I got too excited by all the choices. And uh, while I'm thinking of it, I do want to play my version of the theme song where I, I sang over it eventually, whenever you feel comfortable doing that. You want to do it on the outro? What are you looking at me for? I don't know. I, just, I don't know how much you, you produce, guys are clamoring for it. Well, you produce the show. You, we can do it whenever. Okay, let's do it right now. Let's give this a shot. Oh, you pre-recorded this? Yes. It kicks in. Let me turn it up a little. I'm actually afraid my iPad will, or my laptop will die. Sweat Equity, Sweat Equity. Sweat Equity Podcast. Sweat Equity, Sweat Equity Podcast. Uh, you thought it are was you okay? Over, but it ain't. It's not over. Sweat Equity, Sweat Equity. <laughs> sweat Equity is great. One take, uh, sweat equity podcast. That's the abbreviated version. I have a 14 minute long one. What the hell? That dude? is so dumb. What? I like it. What? <laughs> so I, over I, the top. I usually stupid. appreciate your Tim and Eric esque <laughs> ability <laughs> to make What were fun. you expecting? What? I don't know. I didn't know. Like, first off, I didn't know. I was like, oh, wait, you did a voiceover with this. <laughs> Yeah. That was, so that took me a minute to figure out. And then I'm now I'm thinking like, did you go a little like nuts for a couple of days? And then like, it took I a could, little more effort than I would like to admit. <laughs> <laughs> I could see you sitting by yourself and you're like, this is good. You can't fun. come in. I'm doing something yeah. important. <laughs> the band's going to make it. Okay, babe. Yeah. So, I, yeah. I could see you like in the middle of the night doing this. Yeah. Delirious. Definitely by himself. <laughs> oh, I was definitely by myself. <laughs> It's been a day where you've had the kids all day, where mm-hmm. you basically haven't talked to an adult pretty much all day. And yeah, so, somebody to tell me no. Right, you need that group of guy friends to be like, uh uh-uh. uh. What are you doing, dude? What, what, are you okay? It was one take, and I did it very quickly for the record. That was one take. Whoa. Can you believe that? Whoa. Are you Hans Zimmer? You know, I thought it would be a fun thing. <laughs> so, back, back to. I need a shorter one, yes. No, that's perfect. That's from like outer space. Bomb drop. Wow. Hiroshima. You didn't play any of these yeah, before. It's kind of dark. Yeah. Moment of silence. Eric's uh, losing it a little bit. <laughs> wow. You're losing it. Wow. That's the Roadrunner. Sorry. Okay. We can move yeah, on now. Get some gross ones on there. Let's just be a poor man's, your mom's house. And mm-hmm. Just get some stuff on there. Okay. What? Uh, um, cordless drills invented by NASA. Tang on accident. Yeah, Tang's an example everybody brings up. Uh, what about GPS? Those kind of things. That, that's military as well. Uh, mm-hmm. Internet's military as well, but NASA improves it. Um, 
but it's all because they're doing things to get to the next level for them. So I always look at internal stuff, the ops stuff we're doing. That's always, always try to like make a note that whatever you're doing, that's really difficult internally. That's going to be an opportunity for something else later down the line. I think of everything in templates. Necessity breeds innovation. Right. But we always talk about like, all right, we're doing website development personally. Mm -hmm. Like uh, Eric and I respectively can do it, but we need to make a template to, to a show to teach someone to do it. Cause we don't want to do this grunt work forever. How we like it too is different as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then have that process ready to go so that we can bring in any competent person to do it and just mix and match because every, everybody you hire has an exit. That's how I always look at it. Yeah. And so you're, but you're also creating like an employee handbook on the side because you're going to need that once we hire someone full time. Mm -hmm. um, so I think about these things like. Here's all the benefits you don't get. Well, independent contractor um, until we can get there. That's the threshold. But like, I, it's easy to, to consult for people because we're going through a lot of the same issues or we just did, you know? Mm -hmm. And so that I go, okay, this is a good story to tell that we already went through to talk to clients about stuff. Hmm. What are you thinking in terms of uh, around here that we need to? B biggest one we've had is pricing. I think it's the hardest thing in a service business to, to figure out, right? Here's what most people do. They look to someone shittier than them and they go, okay, we can charge more than them. Yeah. And then they look at someone who's better than them and go, okay, we got to do a little bit less than them. What, what's that sweet spot? That's how yeah, most like, people do it. Yeah. It's like a self-awareness thing of knowing how good or bad you are. But you got to be conscious of that. But if you're doing the math, if you really think about it, that's how you hire a contractor for your house. Like get three quotes, mm -hmm. choose the middle one. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, the guys who are really good are usually booked all the time. And the guys who are like, yeah, I got nothing going on. They suck. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. And they're cheap. And uh, the guys right in the middle, They'll be like, oh, we can start Thursday or something like that. But my thing is like pricing in the digital, there's no standardization. There's no union. There's no, there's no centralized thing that or organizations or even like a, a handful of them that are like pulling together resources like this. So what we need to do internally, what we have is a calculator because we go on price, Yeah. right? We give a quote. I'm, try, I'm not going to get too in the weeds. I'm going to try to break this down. I'm going to yeah, go yeah. from simple to fucking crazy. All right. So simple version is we need a better calculator for a service business. Yeah. Well, that's almost all of it. Cause the way we have to do things, you almost, we almost have to come up with a, a price for every little thing we can do to, exactly. to fix one, to uh, modify one photo, to get it the right size. So that it doesn't, you know, overload the site or whatever. That's this much. That's ten dollars each time, or so, whatever. So now we have an idea, though. We can kind of give ballparks. Oh, your website's X amount of pages. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's ten pages and two rounds of editing. The rounds of editing are the ones that really are tough. It's tricky. And the client communication in the front is what we used to suck at. Now I go, it's going to be done by this date. You're going to have three days to give me your notes, and then it's not on me. Mm -hmm. But even with like pages, you say uh, your your things. 10 it's a litmus, pages. litmus test. It's like a ballpark. Yeah. So that's where this calculator starts simple, right? It, well, yeah. Because we're going to have to guess against what we already know. We already have a sample size of us working. And we know that we underbid and then we get scope crept. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, but we, tr I've been tracking time. Uh, we can ballpark what we've done on a lot of projects. The right? amount of time that you're putting into these projects. So you have to commoditize time. Mm-hmm. So you got to take time and make it a unit. Now, what's that unit worth? Like legit. Uh, if we're doing, um, and then over time you keep breaking it down into these minute things. Yeah. So let's start it. Let's reset a little bit, reset the table. So basically start, if you're a service business, or you're a law firm, because we try to use that model a little bit. Yeah. They go every six minutes, they track time. If you're, if you do bill by the hour or you can bill by flat, whatever. But you have that calculator to figure this out, right? Cost rate, what's the cost per hour? And what's the, the uh, billable hour, mm -hmm. right? You need to make sure that spread's good. Mm -hmm. And then you can start figuring out packages. Okay, you're an IP attorney. 
an intellectual property kind of guy. You know, a, you know the form. You know it takes you an hour to fill out the form for a client. Uh, you know you have to do two hours of like search. And then, then it's up to you to kind of uh, work on making that two hours into two minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I just think about the, the uh, mechanics handbooks that they have that have the the standard hours for certain jobs, you know, it's going to be, you, you, you charge four hours of labor for this job normally, you know, and if it takes them six hours, it doesn't matter. You're getting charged four hours of labor because so, that's what it should cost. So that's, know? that's so the like, beauty. Yeah. You got to develop this book. You got to do it. Not me. So the, well, <laughs> price is dynamic, right? So we talked about, we talked about advertising. We were talking about AdWords before we started and key, the keywords like a DUI keyword, is ninety dollars to hundred in Tampa Bay? Mm. Um, that's for a click. Okay. Yeah. So that's not even for a conversion, a lead, right? Uh huh. Uh, that's because DUIs are usually somewhere between lawyers will charge between thirty five hundred and ninety five hundred, depending on the firm. Now, you know, you spent, you get ten clicks. One of them becomes a client. You're still making profit because mm -hmm. after you do it so much, you know the operation. It, it becomes mechanical it becomes templated you know you know how to go through the process you know what to do easy to forecast there's only easier yeah you figure out that logic tree with every client it's not super unique the problem with us is everything's unique so i'd compare us to more of a, a home builder custom home builder well and i was going to ask like how what research can you get out of just going online and i mean is there it's completely wide open. what so, we're doing yeah so nothing. i so what everybody should do here's the real pragmatic tip that i can give just the tip is uh is if you're not keeping like a spreadsheet of your competition you're fucking crazy mm -hmm. like you should if someone tells you a price like people openly tell us competitors prices we don't ask they go well they're they wanted to charge me 10 grand for this and like Oh, they want us to beat it. What was what, well? Then I want to get like the exact details because I want to get an invoice. I need to send me. I need to equal our project with their project and how that looks because mm. the way they look at website development might be different mm -hmm. than the way we do it. So, um, so I try to find that equal like that equal version of it, and then we can compare. So we, I've, I've been bad about this lately, but I've kept a spreadsheet of all the pricing of all agencies around us and consulting firms around us. Mm -hmm. Given just by clients? Given by clients, some people uh, I've asked um, what the other quotes were because yeah, there's nothing sometimes wrong I'll with just that. go- and They'll give, the, give you the information. So <laughs> here's where I want to get to is I just want the price to be, it just is, right? Mm -hmm. Pricing is dynamic, but it, the market can control it. So the idea down the line is you take a simple calculator, you start with things like pages, and go a hundred bucks a page or something like that. Just keep a simple math. And then afterwards you go, are we winning or losing these? Over time we can figure out what that true price is, mm -hmm. right? Maybe a different level for each pages, for each page where it's, if it's a complicated page and it's or all- if it's e-commerce, you're gonna, it, it's gonna be a lot because it's gonna be, the product pages are gonna be SKUs with, and that's gonna be mixed with their ops, their shipping. Yeah. Not to mention the uh, online buying aspect of it. If they want any part of that, that's a whole other headache. Right. And setting them up for the marketing side. So I, I compare it to custom home building because that's how it is. We have the material side, but it's a lot of labor side that yeah. you have to forecast and correctly do it. So I'm trying, to, I'm trying to pull information from that community to go, how do they do it? Because they've got to have it down pat by now. Right? Why don't you buy a fake mustache and get a costume and pretend like you need web services and just go to all these people uh, we don't maybe need to. i should do it because yeah, they know your face your character right, guy, i'll Eric. do it i'll do it then so okay. here's here's you but, know what? take it off your list i'm doing it, <laughs> it was it was never on it so uh he wrote it down you can't see it so he wrote it down so what i'm saying is all right let's start with something we need internally to get better quoting so we don't get fucked and get frustrated mm -hmm. and, and hate the work we're doing uh and that does bleed through when you're trying to do these little things at the end to make the experience better for the client. Then take that calculator and go, okay, once we have a kind of a, uh, now we can take this and I want to make like a form on our website and I want to market that. I want to go answer these seven questions. We'll, we'll give you a range. Of Instantaneous what, quote build. Yep. Like it. And I want to send people to this link, but I, I, we need to grow in volume. We can do these smaller sites. Mm -hmm. 
uh, in the service professional area has kind of been our niche. So I think doing this and then using the power of advertising that we know and video ads we were talking about off air, mm -hmm. maybe we'll talk about that next episode is, uh, is really promote that. So that's level two, level three. Then we create an app software Oh, and I'm going to open source this. Look, I'll put this on this podcast because you can put ideas out there that are good. Execution is what people lack. Mm -hmm. Execution is the hard part. I call it stoner ideas. Yeah. If someone should do this yeah. app, man. And then, so I'll even put it out there, the secret <laughs> sauce, because I don't really care. Like yeah. it's like Cuban coffee drive through idea. I think would be gangbusters. Mm -hmm. People outside of this area don't get it, but they probably didn't get Taco Bell in the north in the midwest uh at, at the beginning of taco bell right a mexican drive through i don't know if that's a good comp why well because taco bell makes everybody think of diarrhea you know back in the day in the 70s when it was like legit taco oh when it was shit. actually tex-mex cow meat yeah when it was like looked like an old castle like the alamo kind of thing. oh yeah yeah i think that's what they're i remember for. the alamo <laughs> From, I was waiting for your like crickets. <laughs> yeah, I'll do it to myself. I'll just pause well, and I have just it. wait. <laughs> so smooth. So, so you take so level three is we figure out how to license a calculator for like five bucks subscription. So, because agencies have this similar issue too. Well, who's the license? So you for, make this calculator for other agencies. Yep. Oh, okay. Because we're frenemies with all agencies and firms anyway. So. We work with them, but they're technically competition. But we don't do a lot of RFPs against requests for proposals. Mm -hmm. We don't go head to head with a lot of people, honestly. And we don't like doing RFPs because you basically do a third of the work for free. And then do you have certain competitors that you're familiar with yet? Or yeah, 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 rivals? yeah. Rivals. Yeah, but they also may use us because uh, there's projects that come in and they need competent people. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of these agencies are they're all a little bit different. Like they. They do everything, but they do this better, that better right. sort of thing. So, we all know. need supplemental or complemental, yeah. complementary help uh, all the time. Yeah, enough what, of the pie to go around. What do you guys think about putting prices on websites? Because that's something that annoys the shit out of me. When you want to just try and get a quote or an idea on something, where so you don't have to talk to some we're, we're gonna salesman. Do a, we're going to do a starting at price, I think, for a few things and try that for a little bit. So, like. Websites can start at $500, but that's going to be a one-pager digital mm -hmm. business card. And that honestly is probably about right mm -hmm. because that'll be probably three hours of talking to a client just to get that information, sadly. Yeah. And uh, how much time do you put in for like a that page? I can I could probably do while I'm doing this podcast episode. Really? Like, yeah. Yeah, but I'm quick. I made myself quick. Mm -hmm. I don't get, I shouldn't get, I shouldn't get discounted for that. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And I know like a normal kind of person that's familiar with Squarespace, call it, it would take them an hour and a half maybe. I don't know. Um, because they probably go a lot slower. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is, all right, third level is you take that, you take that kind of like you embed, you let people license this kind of calculator to help them price. But then we, we uh, hit them with notifications, pop notifications to say, hey, why don't you input your competitors in the spreadsheet? Mm. This is the next level. Build an thing. algorithm. Now we're now we're price beater. Now we're pulling information. We're procuring so much good data on pricing that isn't available. Yeah. Now we're really finding a true take price. It too. Yeah. Because the more data you have, and if it's if you can figure out how to qualify it to make it relevant and reliable, the better that that like a user, an agency uses our app software, iframe embedded in their site to do their pricing quotes and then we nudge them. Hey, why don't you put in some competitors uh, pricing mm -hmm. and they put in five in their area. Now we can go, okay, uh, Charlotte is equal to Tampa. So you're comparing dynamic pricing. Atlanta charges more in a similar fashion. The more information we have in this area, mm -hmm. Uber, I, I always compare this to Uber. Uber is not a transportation company. They're a data company. They're figuring How so? It's creepy. Because they're figuring out, they're not, they're more logistics than, than actual like transportation of humans. 
because they're figuring out th- your phone's a low jack. Right. So they're figuring out how people move. Mm-hmm. It's way different. It's bigger picture stuff. Um, now that's, that's their ancillary benefit. That's the hard thing they're doing while they have Uber right. as the cab company. So for us, I think this, this is a problem I see every agency needs. Then I can extrapolate this out once we had something that was procuring pricing from competitors. And there's a book called, um, I think I have it up here. I mean, we could just skip steps one, one and two and go right to three and just no, no, start no, no. whoring we, out. We got to figure it out for ourselves. Whore it out. We got to figure it out for ourselves. But you're right. Once we get past our little hiccup and how we use the calculator or whatever we're going to call it, then it, we're at first and goal to get to that third part. Well, we got to get the info anyways, but we have we'll see info. if you want to do it through the calculator. No, we have info. We have it on. A, we have this on a micro scale right now. Oh, I just need to figure out the math, the math of it. And so everything in this calculator falls into the quality, cost, and delivery. Mm-hmm. And then eventually, I'd add in a uh, pain in the ass score. You give you give a you give a, a uh, rating system. Uh huh. Of the client, you are a one star client, bitch. There's clients that you you just got to give a score, and then you charge a premium on that because there's some that they get it, they don't need a lot of attention, and they don't need a lot of education great you're the you're the best yep. you know like everything looks good you great you know how kpis work you know benchmarks you know thresholds you have goals you just need us to do the work and those are normally the larger deals it's always the small deals that are right. the biggest pain in the ass 80 20 rule yeah. yeah so so and that that's part of this this is this this is the crux of a lot of problems for us and it is for a lot of small businesses too and and like you're, we end up working for free is the thing you know well, yeah, almost close to free on some projects because you fuck up and we don't, our whole thing is like, we're not going to be like, well, too bad. See you later. We're going to finish it out. Right. It's like, <laughs> well, yeah, you got to listen to like the whole my, song. My wife used to give me a handy. It's like, I, look, I know I can do this better, but just I, I, want you to, I want you to finish it. <laughs> I don't care how long it takes. I don't care that Get your that hands have blisters on them. Sense of accomplishment. Yeah. That look on your face while you do it. <laughs> Go get some uh, coconut oil. Get a mask. Glue that shit up. Um, so where are we at? What's the time? We're we're good. All right, let's uh, let's let's cut it here and let Eric do his weird outro. And I'm just gonna do the instrumental unless you want me to do the other one. Do the other one and we'll outro it and then oh. we'll do another episode and we'll uh, we'll go talk about some video ads because I've been talking about this a lot. All right. Bye-bye. Bye.